Get Out has concluded that their packaging subscriber is going to receive a large number of messages. Stay tuned to find out when and how using pull subscribers. So far in the series, we learned about Cloud PubSub, how it works using CatOut's asynchronous order processing service. We saw how PubSub helps manage the interactions between order, packaging, shipping, and notification services. In the last episode, we learned that PubSub supports both push and pull message delivery. Let's do a quick recap. Push delivery requires the client to be a public HTTPS endpoint. If you don't have one, which means your service is private or firewalls are involved, then you would use pull. Pull is also more efficient and minimizes latency. So if events are generated at say 100 or 1000 requests per second, then pull is your friend. So today, let's focus on CatOut services to learn pull subscribers. Let's say it is the high season for CatOut. Lots of people are ordering pretty cat posters, which means the packaging service needs to process this huge traffic with high efficiency and low latency. And we also know that the packaging service is internal and does not have a public HTTPS endpoint. Given these conditions, large requests per second, low latency requirements, and no public HTTPS endpoint, the best way to set up our packaging subscriber is in pull mode. The PubSub service offers two APIs for retrieving messages in pull mode. There's a pull API and there is a streaming pull API. The default is a streaming pull API, which is the most effective way to achieve high volume processing asynchronously. And for this reason, default client libraries just use streaming pull for maximum throughput and lowest latency. Streaming pull is actually a lot like push in that it allows PubSub to push messages to the client as they become available. The difference here is that the client gets to initiate this bi-directional persistent connection. The protocol here is also a lot more efficient than HTTP POST used by push. CatOut's packaging service requires high volume processing and the best way to achieve high volume processing is by processing asynchronously. So packaging service should just use default client libraries that use streaming pull API and offers maximum throughput and low latency. Now that we know how a message is received by pull subscriber, let's double click on the message itself. The messages sent by the publisher can contain custom attributes and in subscriber code, you will have to process those attributes. In CatOut's case, say we are sending the message from order service to packaging subscriber. There would be custom message attributes to include like user ID, city, and poster ID. Let's see how to send and receive these message attributes. We will use the same quick start code we used in episode three. If you've not seen it, now is the time to check it out and then continue on here. We are in our Python quick start folder. Let's open pub.py. In the pub method, we will add the logic to update the message to include custom attributes, the user ID, city, and poster ID. Then we open two terminals to start our packaging subscriber in one and send the order message from the order publisher in the other. And we see that the message with the same message ID is received by the packaging subscriber with the custom attributes that were sent. Now, what if suddenly CatOut becomes famous and their order rate increases rapidly? Since messages are being published at a higher rate than they are being consumed, they would have to be processed fast enough. If this situation persists, then CatOut should consider increasing the number of subscriber client instances to process the requests in parallel. But if this is a transient spike in messages, say due to Black Friday or more cat birthdays in a month, then there could be a few possibilities. It's possible that one client could have a backlog of messages, but another client in the network has capacity. But this free client cannot process those messages because the first client maintains a lease on them. It's also possible that the client libraries repeatedly extend the acknowledgement deadline for backlogged messages. Those messages continue to consume memory, CPU, and bandwidth resources. And eventually the subscriber runs out of those resources. To mitigate these issues, you need to use the flow control feature of the subscriber. In this Python example, we are limiting the subscriber to only have 10 outstanding messages at a time. In the high volume context, it is important to mention that the subscriber also support concurrency depending on the programming language. 
For language implementations that support parallel threads such as Java and Go, the client libraries make a default choice for the number of threads. But this choice may not be optimal for your application. If you find that your subscriber application is not keeping up with the incoming message volume but is not CPU bound, you should increase the thread count. And for CPU intensive message processing operations, reducing the number of threads might be appropriate. Now, there could be times when you see duplicate messages from PopSub. This usually happens when you acknowledge a message before its acknowledgement deadline has expired. So PopSub resends the message leading to duplicates. You can detect this behavior in Stackdriver by monitoring the acknowledge operations with the expired response code. To reduce the duplication rate, extend the message deadline. Some client libraries handle this automatically, but if you are building your own client library, then use modify act deadline method to extend the acknowledgement deadline. On the other hand, if you want to force PubSub to retry a message, just set modify act deadline to zero. Now, there are cases where you might need to do a bit more work than just using the asynchronous client library we've been talking about so far. In those cases, you would use the synchronous pull API. It's recommended to use synchronous poll when the application logic might rely on a polling pattern to retrieve messages, or your application requires a precise cap on the number of messages retrieved by it. Streaming pull at the moment can over-deliver before it settles down, so when you have a spiky load of very small messages, it can get you in trouble. Those applications are better off using synchronous poll. Or in the third case, if you're using a language framework like PHP, for example, that does not support gRPC and require HTTP REST API, then you have no choice but to use synchronous pull. If we focus our attention on our CatOut application, due to some resource constraints, the notification service is designed so it can receive a batch of messages in a single HTTP request, and the number of messages cannot exceed, say, 10. Based on what we just learned, CatOut should use Synchronous Pull API in this specific scenario. All right, so today we learned how to receive messages using pull method. We looked at message flow control, concurrency, streaming pull API, and dealing with duplicate messages. Join us next time as we take on the next topic, receiving messages using push. Until then, give us a like, subscribe, and let us know what you want to learn about Cloud PubSub.